talking about that. You're banned, yet Angel does. Tell me about that whole thing. I mean, you ended up making like five albums or something? Yeah, yeah, and a lot of when, music when, when, in my yeah. show. Oh, that's that's yeah, even and better. I have new I have new stuff that I recorded with uh, an artist. His name is uh, he. His name is Clayton, but he his name his you know band name is Cellwell. Right. But he does programming, producing, and he's in the whole kind of electronic uh, scene and dubstep and that type of music. And and we've we we were uh, working together. We wrote a Linkin Park record before Linkin Park came out in 1983 oh. or four, and it was too ahead of its time, honestly. And uh, when Linkin Park came out, we were like, "Holy shit, that that that's, is our that's us. sound!" Like yeah. I could play it. You can, I, you know, send you some tracks. It's crazy, <laughs> but um, but I love music. You know, my uh, my my uh, Chenille, my better half, is an incredible musician. She sings. A couple of songs that I produced and and wrote with her in the show, and uh, she's just an amazing singer. I love being around music. You know, music can bring you back instantaneously to when you were a kid, and and it could just set the tone, and you could escape reality with music. It's an illusion, you know. And and so um, for me, I'm just such a, and I have such a diverse, diverse eclectic taste in music i can listen mm -hmm. to black sabbath led zeppelin then i can listen to billy joe and john cougar mellencamp mm -hmm. uh, yeah. by the way <laughs> i watched a, a documentary that you were on about jack and diane and about that drum fill that you came up with that really was like a big part of that song but i was so disappointed no disrespect to john but as a fan and when I heard that song, he did the whole thing acoustic, and I was waiting for it. I'm like, here it comes, here it. I guess it's not coming, <laughs> dude. I, I went, to, I, I went to see him play at the Hollywood Bowl, and I was like, it was so cool to see those songs that I had recorded, and had play, performed for you know 17 years with him. And we get to Jack and Diane, and they skipped the drum solo. I'm like, what? And and the audience was looking at me like, here it comes, Kenny. We're gonna air drum with you, and then went right by. And we're like, what? That'd be like skipping that drum fill that Phil Collins did in yeah. In the Air Tonight. It's like go 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 go. Like, yeah, no. What? And, and, the, and, the, and the crazy thing is, is you moved over, I think, to Jim Ursay's box, right? I don't know if he was there. No, no, I, I. I no, I, I was off the drum set while he did that. No, um, no, no, no. I'm talking about the day of the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in Jim's box, yes. Right. So, because I saw you, and that part was coming up because they played it, and the the mascot did the drum part. You were watching me laugh. I was, I was laughing because... <laughs> I saw you because I'm looking... <laughs> I wanted to see as if a drummer could resist, especially that they created the part. Would he actually air drum that or he just sit there and be cool and listen to it what would you have done if what, what did you do you kind of laughed right i laughed because i was laughing at I, instead of the air mascot. drumming i was laughing at the mascot try, you know doing it i thought that was hilarious yeah apparently they they had me on fox news you know uh national news and of course they when they came in on me they showed me with Mellencamp at the Ursay thing. Then they cut to me in the box, and of course I was texting. <laughs> I was, I was saying, let me know. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey Chris, what's up, man? Oh my God, dude, that is. Uh, <laughs> I'm really excited. I can't wait to this December 18th because as of now, I'm not doing anything, and I really, uh, I really. Well, want you're to be welcome there. to come out anytime you want. I plan a Hollywood T Mind Freak Hang. I do oh. a Wednesday through Sunday at seven o'clock. So, and all the people watching and listening to this now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm so grateful for the support. And if you're ever in Vegas and you want to have an experience that you can never have anywhere else in the world, um, I'd like to invite you personally to see Mind Freak because. We have a tornado on the show. Like literally, I'm doing this great jacket, and I'm the nucleus of a tornado where winds, real winds and debris and shits flying around, and the and the entire audience is immersed in it. They're not watching me do it. They're in the storm. There's so many different things like that. There's a blizzard that happens. 
Um, you know, I levitate and fly around and, and it, it's just like the most, like my most iconic, um, my greatest hits, if you will, for lack of a better term, yeah. I do every night. So people see the stuff that I did on TV that they're like, there's no way that's bullshit. That's a trick photography. That's CGI. Right. That's a crane. Right. That's how he's levitating. It's a crane, honey. And then they see in full light and they're just like, uh, and then I pick somebody up and I fly away with them. So oh my you get God. Me stuff like that, like Dude. You know, and tons of like Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons love the show because it's very theatrical, tons of effects. As a matter of fact, uh, Paul, uh, originally when they were going out to kiss, asked me if I was interested in getting involved and help directing their show. And wow. I was opening up my show at the time, wow. so I wasn't able to, but they sent me their last residency in Las Vegas and I watched it for about a week and I gave a bunch of notes and stuff. And then the guy they got to do it, they they uh, used uh, a lot of the stuff that I suggested in their show That's was good. awesome, but they love theatricality. And I think my show embodies that. That's true. That makes it looks like like Cirque du Soleil on steroids. I can't wait. That's incredible.